Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial and in this video, actually the first thing I want you guys to do in this tutorial is go to your kitchen and grab a huge bucket of popcorn. And then after that go to your bedroom and grab the most comfortable blanket you can possibly find and then come back. Because once you have both those things, you're ready to hear the story, probably the greatest story I ever told. This story is called The Life of an Activity. So, you know, if you're an Android developer, this might be a pretty interesting story, definitely pretty useful. It starts out like this. Every activity that you ever create is going to be a subclass of the special class that we didn't see yet called the activity class. So out there somewhere, there's this activity class and every activity that you create, we're going to inherit from. Now remember, whenever we inherit from something, we get all of the cool methods from that class. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, okay, I can clearly see that main activity extends action bar activity and extends just means inherit. Of course, you guys know. So this is actually a subclass of action bar activity. But you said that every activity that I create is going to inherit from this activity class. Well, even though you can't see it directly right here, this action bar activity is inheriting from another class and that class is inheriting from activity. So this main activity that we just created is like fourth generation of the awesome activity class. But I just want to mention that because if you guys are looking at all these methods, you're not, okay, where did all these methods come from that I'm overriding? Well, they came from that activity class. And all this class is, is it's pretty much a basic template that gives us a bunch of cool functions that we could use on whatever activities we create. So that's the purpose of that. So since we have all these cool functions, let's talk about what they are and why we need them. Well, every activity that you create, it goes through a certain life cycle. Now, the first thing that happens is it calls this method called onCreate. So whenever the user first starts your app for the very first time and your activity is born, it gets created. Now, in this activity, what you typically do is you set the layout. Of course, that makes sense. The very first thing you want to do is give the user a nice interface set up to look at. Now, just a real quick overview, and I'm going to talk to you guys about this in detail in just a second, but um, eventually, whenever they close out of your app, it's going to call other methods like on destroy. So whenever your app, or excuse me, whenever your activity is about to get destroyed or die, um, what you might want to do is do things like save their data for them. So if they, I don't know, are playing a game or something, you might want to save all of their settings so they can have it the next time they open your app. So basically what I'm trying to say is each activity that you create is going to go through many different stages in its life or many different states as it's more commonly referred to. So in this tutorial that's what I'm going to be doing talking to you about every single state and the details of each. So the first thing that you actually probably want to do is start your emulator because I know they kind of take a long time to boot up and we're actually going to be tweaking some of this code and changing some things so uh, yeah go ahead and do that now another thing I want to mention is this I'm going to be talking to you guys through each stage of your activities life and instead of just me explaining it and talking through I figured it would be a better idea to actually print something out on the screen every time the state of your activity changed so what we can do is we can actually import this cool class and this is another tip you guys are learning like two things in this tutorial bonus information um all right so if you go to android.util.log what this is, is is pretty much a package that lets us print out log information and all we're gonna do is we're gonna print out something on the bottom of the screen that says like um your activity is being created or something so that's all we're doing all right so once we have that imported Go above all your methods and we're going to make a new, let me scroll down here, we're going to make a new private static final string variable, not string, string, and I'm just going to name this tag and it's good convention to name it tag just because um, in the documentation for this, this is just what you do and you're, you guys are going to see what this does in a second. Well, I probably should talk you guys through this. So. The purpose of this tutorial is to talk to you guys about the different states of your activity. Now, by default, your emulator is going to be sending out a bunch of different messages pretty much when any event happens. And there's a lot of crap that happens on your phone, but we are only interested in these messages regarding states. So just to filter out 
um, the important messages we're gonna make a special tag and stick it on each activity it's gonna be called Bucky's message you can actually name this anything you want because it's just like a unique identifier to say only print out these log messages and not all the other crap that we don't care about alright so once we have that what I want you to do is go down to on create right here and I'll show you guys how to add one of these log messages so if you go log dot I what you can do is you can throw in two parameters right here the first parameter is your tag so this is just Bucky's message and this is just for filtering out um, the important ones later on now after this is what do you want to print out on the screen and I'll just actually print out the state of this activity so again that's all these three lines of code do right here and they're actually really helpful whenever you're trying to debug, debug something in your Android development process now another tip that's gonna make your Android studio development process a little bit easier is this thing called code completion and I'll show you guys how it works right now so under this method right here click where you would first start writing your method and then hold down the alt key on your keyboard and hit insert so right here it's gonna pop up a bunch of different things what we want to choose is override methods because remember we're pretty much inheriting all these methods from the activity class however we just want to customize them to add our own custom log message just so we can see what's going on so click override methods and then it's gonna give us a bunch of different options to override so these are saying okay what method do you want to use pretty much do you want us to um, fill in for you well there's actually this method called on start so if you scroll down a little bit right here on start and hit OK there we go saves us some time again it took a little bit <laughs> it took a while for me to just explain it but if you're just doing it to yourself it takes like five seconds so pretty sweet but anyways now that we have this on start method what I want to do is actually just copy this to add another log that's going to print out on our screen and I'm just going to add on start now instead of me doing the exact same thing over and over and over again what I actually did is I took all of the methods that I want to overwrite and I actually put it on my forum so if you go to my forum again this is the URL I'll put this below the video if you guys just want to click on it but check this out I put all the source code right there so go ahead and copy this and hop over back to Android Studio and paste it back in and I actually um, can delete this because I copied that too but now it saved you a bunch of typing pretty sweet so all this program is going to do is it's going to print out a little message on the screen every time your activity changes states again you would never want to do this in the actual app this is just to demonstrate when each of these stages are going to happen but for this example it's actually pretty useful so like I said before whenever we use this little log program right here by default it's gonna be printing out a bunch of random log messages pretty much everything that's going on in your phone or your little emulator is gonna try to print out but what we are only interested in are these log messages that we created right here so we need to build a real quick filter so to do that head over to your Android tab right here click on it and alright so those are a bunch of see these are the ones we don't want to see and this is just because my emulator is running right now so obviously we want to make a filter and this is how you do this and another thing I want to point out is this is just a nice little Easter egg if you look at this log cat symbol you're gonna see that it's actually the Android head and this is actually non I don't even know how to pronounce it but you know that YouTube video where it's like that cat that looks like he's attached to a pop tart or something with a rainbow come out of his butt that's a little symbol for that so um I don't know I just thought that was a cool little Easter egg all right so anyways back to building our filter what we're gonna say is any log message that has this tag attached Bucky's message only show those so make sure whatever you whatever string you have here copy this now in the drop down right here select edit filter configuration this allows us to build a filter right here now I actually already did this but my microphone was off so that's why this is filled in right here I have a weird microphone and when you put it up it mutes itself and uh so yeah I just filmed for about 
five minutes and then I was trying to edit the video and I'm like oh can't hear anything because I'm a moron so so again you're gonna have to call yours anything you want I'm just gonna call mine Bucky filter and the only other thing you have to add is by log tag regex just stick this right in here so it's gonna say okay filter equals built so now instead of no filters which show everything we can only show log messages with this attached pretty sweet so now just go ahead up to here and run your app now keep your eye on this little section right here because whenever our app actually builds itself and pops up it's gonna start displaying those state messages so of course choose OK and check it out alright so our app is loading and it switched back to this thing you SOB so I'm gonna switch it back to Bucky's filter but check this out let me position this so you guys can see it alright so the first thing it printed out was on create now I already told you guys and you well you obviously know what that method does it pretty much just sets up the interface now after that on start this method always gets called right after either on create or on restart so what on start means is pretty much your app is about to start up the that's the most simple I can explain it now on resume what this means is it's a method that always gets called whenever your activity is the one that the user currently has open so remember anytime you want to add code that says okay the user is now looking at this screen this is the activity that they have open you can stick that in on resume now just to show you guys some cool stuff whenever you actually close out of your app hit the home button right here look what happens the first thing it does is it calls on pause and then it says on save instant state and then on stop now on pause what this means is the user is no longer seeing your activity so whenever of course I was looking at that screen no I'm now I'm no longer looking at it then on pause gets called now another reason on pause may get called is maybe I just switched screens and I'm now looking at a new one so again those are two different times when your app is gonna call on pause pretty much when your user is looking at the screen and they're not looking at it anymore now instead of talking to you guys about on save instant state in detail and on stop there's actually a lot more different states than this what you guys can do is I found this image online that is absolutely awesome and I stuck it in that same URL so what you can see here is a pretty awesome visualization of every single state in your activity now again I wanted to show you guys this because right now if I talk about every single one of these things in detail it's probably gonna be a little overwhelming and kinda pointless right now so instead what I'm gonna do is this I'm just gonna talk about these now that we understand what they are and that they do exist I'm gonna talk about each state as we need them